Hello, hello. Welcome back. It's good to be back after a week away last week. How is everybody doing? Please uh, let me know for the first five where you're coming from and if you are familiar with binaural 360 samples or spatial audio because this should be quite an interesting one. I've also got a new microphone for this stream. Hopefully it's nice and clear. Let's hope. <laughs> it looks like the levels are good. But yeah, how's everybody doing? Please let me know where you're tuning in from. And then I'll give you the run of the mill of what we're going to look at today, what plugins we're going to be exploring. And we're also going to be trying to make some kits using the spatial audio processes that I'm going to be discussing in this stream. Um, let me just load up the first plugin so you guys can see it, actually. This is sound feel. I'll just have it in the background. So, uh, spatial audio is a huge, huge topic. It can encompass many things like binaural, ambisonics. Um, it can mean first order ambisonics, second, third. It can mean Dolby Atmos, which is object-based audio. And then obviously people have heard of surround sound with cinema. Um, so, yeah. Let me know if you have any experience or know-how of any of these topics. This is quite a advanced um topic uh, certainly in the world of sound design um so i think it's it's definitely something that's worth exploring and there's not much content out there on it as of yet but this is going to blow up i believe in the next couple of years in terms of xr which is extended reality virtual reality augmented reality um so so audio is it's going to definitely head in this direction and um, if you just look at what apple and amazon and spotify are doing they're trying to make their streaming services compatible with um Dolby Atmos and immersive audio for binaural mixdown, which is something I'm going to try and uh, communicate today. I think now is a good time for people to learn about spatial audio and how you can apply it to your sound design, to your workflow, to mixing, all of these different things. So, uh, yeah, I am Brent March. For those of you who don't me, I run these month monthly, these Monday sound design sessions. Um, I believe we didn't have one last week, but I believe the week beforehand we were... Ooh, ah, it was the ADSR Sample Manager stream. Then before that, we looked at the Convolution Reverbs. Week before that, we looked at how to uh, produce cyberpunk and synthwave sounds. So there's a, it's very varied here. Um, we cover lots of different topics. And if you feel like any of that interests you, then hit the subscribe and notification bell for when any live streams go obviously there's not just myself there's um tetro jane arneson and um, there's Lya who do productions uh for k-pop and there's sean divine who does mastering so there is something here for everyone and you can even find out more on the discord so i think that's everything covered um today's rundown we're going to be exploring ambisonics to begin with in pro tools the reason being is basically Studio One sadly doesn't support quadraphonic and um, surround audio, but we will be going into um, Studio One after we've had a bit of time to explore um, the surround here. But the good news is, I think I'm one of the few people who use Studio One here. But um, this plugin is free, and it works with Ableton, with Logic, uh, with Pro Tools, with Reaper, and even Adobe Audition. Suppose you don't have Adobe, but you have Adobe Creative Cloud. There you go. Um, so this, obviously I'm running in Pro Tools, but we're also going to look at something from Dear VR, um, which is again, virtual reality in Studio One. Hello, Hydratech. Hello, Paul Brown. Um, I always forget to head over as well to the restream chat. Um, hello everyone, on, anyone on Facebook or Twitch. Sadly, sometimes I can't see the messages on the, the restream thing, so I try, I try and keep on top of it. But we are going to start off by basically looking at ambisonics and how we can use um, quadraphonic um, field recordings and mix them into a binaural render. So what I mean by binaural is actually basically um, a psychoacoustic sort of effect, which your head will render... Um, the sound coming from different sources, not just left and right. So as you can see, I'm wearing headphones. It's pretty imperative, by the way, for this stream that you wear headphones, um, not studio monitors, unless you are in a, you know, a spatial audio environment with lots of speakers. That would be amazing. But I would suggest wearing headphones. So binaural is more of like, it's a bit like ASMR. 
you hear the audio and basically you take it in and your your brain makes decisions when it talks your ears talk to your brain it, it makes decisions about sort of where things are coming in terms of not just left and right but height distance and um, that sort of characteristics in the three-dimensional field so what we can do basically is i have these samples here so there's a, a serious variation here and i think that's it's a nice way to go about it so i've got this first recording and what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to uh, bypass the plugin just while we do this this is a jazz quartet not very sound design but worth showing you this one is skaters in a um uh, skate park it almost sounds like percussion like top loop percussion Okay, now we got this one here. Uh, this one's actually like a bell. Okay, it's quite quiet, so. This one is Subway. This one is Running Water. Oh, this one is um, a piece of wood that you sort of wangle around and it creates like, this hydro-electricity sort of sound. Super, super cool. I believe this one is washing machine. And this is the last one. These are impacts, metal impacts, throwing things off metal objects. So, these, as you can see, are using four different audio files on the lanes here. So they're not stereo, they're actually quadraphonic. Um, so monophonic, stereo, quadraphonic, we can keep going up, but basically I'm using this microphone here, if I just grab it, I just got this. So this is uh, a Rode NTS-F1, by the way, this is not like a paid promotion or anything. Um, I'm using this microphone to record these samples, and I personally think that there is maybe one or two sort of ambisonic packs out there, but in terms of samples and sample packs, I think they're going to become like a virality in terms of people are going to want them for virtual experiences, for videos, for games, for films, and for their music. So this has four heads on it. The microphone I'm talking with right now has one. This has got one, two, three, four, quadraphonic. I then record that into a recorder. And then I can bring the audio back into my door and I can process it in a way that kind of confuses and also blows your mind. So to show you exactly what I mean, I have the sound field up here. And um, if I just sum it to basically zero, I'll get there eventually, I think you can just double. Um, and then this here is the direction at which it plays back. Let's do it fully 90. There's a lot of things you can do in post-production here. By the way, this plugin is free. You don't even have to have the microphone to get these um, WAV files. You can get them off the internet. So you don't actually have to have the microphone, but if you want to create your own um, sort of soundscapes and recordings, then I would highly suggest that you look into um, the Ambisonic mics. Ambisonics is a technique that's been around since actually the 1970s, but it's only just starting to sort of get into fruition. So anyway, let's listen to the skaters again and I'm going to engage the plugin. So I'll just bring the gain up on it. So, this is currently in stereo, yeah? Left and right, it's not mono, it's stereo. With the sound field plugin, what I can do is, I have a lot of control in post-production over so many things. I can make the stereo image wider, thanks to, just realised I can't quite see what I'm doing. I can make the stereo image a lot wider thanks to um, the ambisonic mic heads that are capturing above, below, left and right, not just two pencil mics. Again, I've got some pencil mics in, in my field recording case, but it can capture left, right, and um, back and right. So left, back, right, back, right, front, left, front. So you're, you're capturing 360 audio with these microphones and it records them on a quadraphonic stem, sort of like a stereo master, but it's actually a quadraphonic. And then what we can do is achieve um, binaural sounds. Let me just show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to widen the stereo image. And really, it's not stereo. It's 3D. So here we go. This is stereo. Okay. And now we are moving the headspace of the left and right ears 180 degrees 
and we can decide if we want the audio to come from above, below, or sideways. Again, you'll have to be wearing good headphones, but that just changed dramatically. Like, a huge change. You can hear the sound coming from behind you, you can hear the sound coming from... It's, it's amazing. I'll just shut up and let, let you hear for a second. I think it's I think it's absolutely incredible. So let me just keep moving the adjustment of the head here. So if you see in the vector graph where it's really, really light blue, that shows the sound is coming from in terms of the 360 space, where it's coming from in the time. There's a couple of skaters in this park, basically. So on some of the further examples we look into, the sound will come from maybe just one direct spot. But it also is useful for this. If we go to the jazz recording, I'm not really going to use this for sound design, but I want to use it to illustrate a point. If I play this back, right, I can actually change the direction of the microphone. So say that on the day I just had the one microphone, I could essentially put it in the middle and record a group of musicians, then come come back and mix down this, um, individual tracks, basically, for each member from one microphone. So if, again, if I play this, I can find different musicians, like... Clearly, this is the drums. Okay. Skip to some other part. Okay. So over here, there's not much of the content, is there? And I'll make the headspace uh, narrower in the stereo field. So here we go. Here is the horns. I can hear the piano here. And again, I can widen the image. So it's mostly horns there, mostly horns, mostly piano. Let's keep moving around. Mostly, I'm mixing it down there in terms of the height. And if I move this... I can find different, basically, different sources. So if you do go out, you can you could automate these effectively to get different sounds. So back to the skaters. We're hearing it coming from lots of different places here because of the multiple people. Uh, let's go on to this next one. So this one is a bell. Okay, let's check this out again. I'm just going to return to uh, zero and return the stereo to basically as close as I can get it for now. Something else you can do with Soundfield and with your samples, if you pull them off the internet or if you get them from a sample pack, I think that we might start seeing more of that. Um, is you can change the polar pattern, which is crazy. You can go from omnidirectional to cardioid, and not only that, you can change the orientation of the microphone. So I can go from horizontal to inverted and to upright, which is the position I recorded in. So it gives you a different perspective and angle again. So there's a lot of creat creative decisions you can make in post here. So where did that come from? If I go back. So let me widen my image and then listen to that. It's so, it's different again, isn't it? Let's move on to this next example. This is Subway. This uh, 4RN, this is Sound Field by Rode, a free, a free plugin uh, for you to get using with your samples. Some people I know will probably be wondering already, like, um, you know, where do you grab quadraphonic audio samples from? Well, you can get them off the internet. They're not super popular or anything, but you could actually upmix your stereo files to quadraphonic. And I'm going to show you how you can do that with another plugin uh, sort of halfway through. So this is a subway. Again, how wide I've made the stereo image. I'm just changing the head orientation so the sound's sort of more above to the side of me below me this is crazy so basically if you think how far video and cameras have came like this has got 4k 60 frames per second on an iphone but for some reason music has continued to be consumed in a worse format over the past couple of years like 
it went stereo then we've got these mono speakers and you know we've got your smart speakers and then phones have mostly got mono speakers so it's a it's great to see that streaming services and artists are wanting their music in spatial audio the difference with dolby atmos versus ambisonics is it's basically a mixing process using a dolby atmos plugin suite and you it's a very, very similar process, though, but it's object-based, and you can basically place objects around a almost like this head tracker. So Ambisonics is quite similar um, in a way. Let's keep going through some of these examples. Ultimately, what I want to show you is how basically I can turn a quadraphonic sample into a binaural soundscape and mix it down into a stereo file. That means that anyone can use it in their door. doesn't matter what door you have. You don't have to have this plugin, etc., etc. So here's the uh, water one. This is it in just like boring stereo. I think it's crazy to th say that stereo is boring, but. And there we go, we've made it wide. Let's change the direction. So you can see the water is primarily coming from here and here. So let's do a before and after and think. When you think about, um, think about artists like Phineas and Billie Eilish. I watched a great video about how Phineas used like the sound of um, the bus stop. It's, it's some sort of clicking sound on like, sorry, not a bus stop, a, tra a traffic light. Um, he uses atmospherics in his songs absolutely loads. In their music, they're using and exploring sort of sound worlds. And I think that this is definitely something we can expect to see from those artists. I know that their music's already available in spatial audio, but this is the sort of thing where I think that those type of creators are going to be heading. Let's go to bypass this plugin and hear just what a normal stereo, well this is quadraphonic, but what this would have sounded like. Another huge, huge benefit of using ambisonics in, so ambisonic samples and re recording ambisonics and using binaural sounds is effectively you're creating more room in your mix so one of the biggest battles as sound designers as uh, composers as mixing engineers is finding room for stuff we have that issue of the kick and the bass the relationship between them two is hard enough to get right with your low end then it's like a fight for everything else isn't it in the mix with 360 you're no longer just thinking like right what am i going to put in the left speaker and what am i going to put in the right and what am i going to have down the center basically with 360 you can have sound coming from above you, from below you, from behind you, from in front of you. And that is great for a lot of the sort of pop production or any genre, really, where you have ear candy plastered all over the track. You can now put them into a different space. And again, everything mixes down to a binaural render where you can listen to it with your just music with your headphones uh, again someone asking what this is this is Soundfield by Rode it is compatible with the Rode NTSF one which I just got which I'm loving and I've recorded these samples with it um, and some of them are grabbed off the net as well if you want to try this yourself completely free um, but yeah you can also use this um, and, and find samples yourself and maybe make your own binaural decisions but I'm going to mount, bounce some of these down and we're going to use them in Studio One with another spatial audio plugin in a bit so let's just do a little bit more stuff here. So what I'm going to change now is I'm going to change the polar pattern. So now we go change the polar pattern. And I've changed to a horizontal microphone orientation. And now it's inverted. Okay, let's bypass the plugin. That's crazy how different that is. It just opens it up so much. So you can make decisions in post with this plugin. But again, this is just, it's not just about the road plugin. You know, there's so many spatial audio plugins we can delve into, but it's super, super interesting. And I personally feel like we're on the cusp of like a new era of of audio. People are going to want to consume everything in a more immersive format and stereo will become, you know, just outdated and old because of how easy it is to consume this stuff. Let's check this sample. Okay, so we could make some crazy awesome drones with this, couldn't we? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do as well. I'm gonna take a couple of these, bounce them down, bring them into Studio One as stereo files, but mixed with a binaural plugin. 
Um, I'm going to keep this the same, but let's uh, have this. <laughs> see that sound is coming from this part of the quadraphonic mic. Let's do a bypass. Quite flat all of a sudden. We don't have to have it this wide, you know, we could bring it narrower. Super, super cool. And I think we have, yeah, we've got two more. There's quite a bit of variation here. Okay, this one's a washing machine. You'd be amazed what people do with these sounds though, seriously. Bypass. It just feels like it's mainly left ear dominated and really flat. Like, listen to how different that is. Again, I really hope that people are wearing the headphones. You could make you could make a rhythm out of that. Like, you could totally make a rhythm out of that. Uh, and last one, guys. Uh, I think this is the metal object throwing. Okay, so we could turn some of these into impacts. Bypassed. Enabled. Bypassed. Enabled. Building up cool rhythm here. Really quite flat and you're hearing a lot of resonance issues. And because you have so much room in a 3D sphere, you get rid of some of the resonance issues that would otherwise be quite dominant in stereo. So, if your mind isn't blown now, I don't think I ever will be able to achieve that. <laughs> I, for, for me personally, I just think that this technology is amazing. And yeah, it's more accessible than ever. The microphone isn't cheap, but it's actually very cheap in terms of the category of microphone it's in. I think they're about nine. I, yeah, I think I was about 999. But if you want to really delve into some new stuff and, and you're, you have the freedom to do so, I would seriously suggest that you do that. So I'm going to pick a couple of these guys. Mix them into a stereo file, which is really important because, as you can see, this is on four. It's four tracks. Um, yes, Ray, you can take a mono image. Um, it doesn't even have to be uh, stereo. Uh, da, 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 just quickly go back. I'm trying to. I know we haven't got a huge audience, so I can kind of pick comments up as I'm going along today. Um, but you could just take one um, file, and then you could have. Um, capabilities over that or you could take a stereo file or you could take all four you got left right front left back so you got four files here so i'm going to take uh, a couple of these mix them down and then we'll take them over to studio one so bear with me while i make a couple of creative decisions i'm just going to bypass this i mean that's so different like so just before i do bounce this it's amazing. Just change the right. So I'm hearing, I'm actually enjoying the room sound a bit more here. Okay, so uh, da, 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 if I go to uh, bounce. Uh, ADSR live stream. So let's call this uh, Blade. Um, and I'm just going to change the file to my desktop. There's my Ambisonic first order recordings. And um, let's just do that as a bounce. Let's do it. It's done it on my separate window here. And that's it done. Um, Just reading comments. Um, you have to mix down right for consumer hearing. So yeah, Hummel, um, you're absolutely correct. So the thing with working with surround is, I think it's quite complicated for people to get their heads around. And I myself was a bit like, what on earth? Um, I think people think that you, in order to be able to to mix and create sound design in 3D, you need 3D. You can do it with headphones if you have software that does binaural rendering. So basically, the Rode plugin does binaural rendering down to, um, obviously, headphones, which is just left and right. Um, but you could use plugins as well and do full 7.1.2 and um, bigger array systems for Atmos and stuff like that. 
But the beauty is actually, I think it's phenomenal that we can mess, um, we can bounce them down to a binaural stereo render because that means anyone can can consume this audio in a new way. Because let's face it more or less everyone has a pair of headphones don't they whether it's ear pods or like these headphones or you know it, it really doesn't matter if you have headphones you're going to be able to experience 3d audio and binaural audio even if it's been processed using ambisonics because ambisonics really should be consumed in a spatial environment but i'm using binaural rendering that's the benefit of these plugins and we're going to be using dvr reality in a similar way so i've done one bounce let's do another one Okay, I'm going to open up this plugin again. I mean, this could be so many fantastic things. Let's change the orientation, just out of curiosity. Horizontal. just feels so flat I, I, I can't believe that anyone would ever think that basically um stereo is boring but it is you know um no doubt that if i shift music production board i'd be having to change the way i do mixed downs even an atmos on 7.1 omni e um so you could do atmos mixes in as long as you've got a compatible door you could do atmos um using the Adobe Atmos um, Panner, which is um, a very cheap and affordable plugin. Um, and it uses, again, binaural rendering. So you just have to learn sort of a new plugin and process. But if I'm honest, I feel like as creatives, if we want to continue um, this sort of exploration of audio and sound and the way we consume it, I think that everyone will eventually end up working with some form of 360 or 3D sound. Um, okay, I like this one. I'm just going to bounce this one. Um, uh, fan. I think it's on the same place. Yeah. Okay, I've just bounced this one. It's thirsty work talking about these. Okay, I think we absolutely have to take the the water one because this, you know, this could be so many things in, in terms of textures, really, couldn't it? crazy how different that is yeah it's absolutely a good thing i think it's about time that as it's about time music got some love versus just video 4k 8k you know all these different uh, speaking of video actually mine's just gone tiny 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 bit out of focus which is annoying um let me grab the shutter hopefully that's a bit better um so uh this one let's bounce this one going to go over to here and I'm going to go to bounce and this one is water and while that's doing that it's quite a big file this one actually hopefully Hopefully that's, um, yeah, that's better focus. There we go. Um, okay, and should I do one more? Oh, we, we'll do the skaters, because for me, that's absolutely crying out. I'm a uh, percussion top. You know what I mean? It just feels like it could be a great top. Let's check this one again. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. That's just so cool. And let's just do this. And this is my last bounce. Any questions, guys, while um, while I'm on with the Soundfield plugin Ambisonics before I move over to, um, to Studio One? 
Hello, um, MV Beckham. A couple of regular names. Yeah, it's a quiet day. Who knows? Back to school, maybe? <laughs> um, yeah, we agree music is always more interesting and has had much more uh, headroom or space, maybe a better word to work with good times. Early. Yeah, Ray, I, I completely agree. We basically, um, there's this huge, huge battle here um, with mixers and sound designers of just fighting for space, isn't there? Because we only got, it's crazy. Like, when you think you got like, so many tracks in music and then you bust them and even then you've got loads of buses and trying to create space for all of it in stereo is a is a battle so 360 is the answer to it really i, I can't think of why it's uh took so long but if we're here so we kind of complain you know uh so there we go um I'm just about to go into Studio One, and we're going to look at Dear VR Reality, which is another plugin. There's also um, a free version of that plugin. I'm on top of my headphone wire. There's also a free version of that plugin. Um, yes, uh, just before we head off, Reigns. So I'm about to use Dear VR, which is basically, I think it's Sennheiser. Um, and they do s the Ambio, which is basically exactly the same as this guy, but Sennheiser's version. Um, yes, this we're working with Quadraphonic Recordings, um, Hydra, but we are basically processing them using Soundfield, which allows us to change um, loads of things. Depending on what you're using, it allows you to change the orientation, the polar patterns, you can change the 3D mix, etc. Um, also, you can select different microphones from here. So I'm using this Rode one, but basically I'm just, you could pick a B format, just a general ambisonic microphone or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. Um, when you render these files to headphones, what does the resulting audio sound like on speakers? So even on speakers, it you can hear a noticeable difference, but I would always say that in order to consume um, binaural rendered sort of 360 down to binaural, you should do it with headphones. Um, so I am going to, uh, there's quite a few questions coming in now. So obviously the short number of views you here are very interested, which is great. See, I'm just going to head over now. Um, I'll save this file because, you know, better be safe than sorry. Um, and also it's Pro Tools Ultimate as well, which is expensive. Um, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with people's comments. I feel like I don't want to leave them behind. Um, mono Stereo Signals 2. Yes, so you can up mix mono and stereo. We're going to look at that at, uh, sort of in a bit. Um... It's kind of in stereo. All oh, right. Okay, so uh, here we go. Studio One. It may have let me down in terms of not being ab available for uh, surround sound. By the way, um, Dolby Atmos is available in Logic, in Reaper, in um, Ableton, in Pro Tools, as you've just seen, and in Adobe Audition but sadly not in Studio One. My reason for that is probably because Studio One, Luna, most of these newer doors are, st again, they're basically new, aren't they? Um, so I'm going to basically now show you this guy, which is Dear VR Pro. So I've actually had this plugin for a long, long, long time, um, and it's got some crazy coding showing up, which is weird. There we go. So basically, this is a plugin that allows us to sp put sounds into um, 3D environments and change so much more than just panning left and right. Because let's be honest, how long have we done? Um, how long have we done? Uh, like left and right panning in terms of like placing things in mixes and sound design. So it's time again. We had more spatial audio capabilities with these things and that's where this plugin's great by the way again none of this is like affiliated with any of these companies but i just i, I use this one i know that waves do a good one maybe nx b360 um who else does one i can't remember off the top of my head nugent audio do some more advanced ones um sound particles some companies like this so let me just show you what I mean. Um, so let me grab a plugin, uh, sorry, a loop or something from here. Da, 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 da. It's just sending me in. I had picked one before already. Um, I actually haven't downloaded these. So um, yeah, if you use Ableton Live, 
you're lucky. It'll work. <laughs> um, the plugin is rendering down for hearing with headphones where where is no natural head in between the sound or does it also work? So guys, I'm going to answer some of these questions at the end as I normally do. I was just picking them up as I was coming through because it was quite quiet and there wasn't many questions. Um, if you have questions, keep them coming in. I'll, I'll come and answer them at the end for sure. Um, by the way, this is the new 1.7 ADSR sample manager. I'm just using it basically to store my online samples and my local samples. Um, let's check this out. So, da, 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 da. Um, I thought I liked that, but I might have changed my mind. Just looking for one sample. Um, actually, maybe I grab a. Hmm, just ditch the loops for now. This is the demo track. Mm, that's great. Okay, let's just download this. Um, I'm just using this. Um, as a, sort of like a layer to build upon with the rest of the spatial audio stuff. That will do. That was nice and fast as well, as you can see. By the way, that plugin, if anyone's missed it, that plugin's completely free. That's our own plugin. You can go and grab it on the website right now. No hidden costs, completely free. Um, so here's the loop. What's this at? 150 beats per minute. Okay, let's just... Okay, great. Um, and again, just loop this. Da, 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 da. I'm just looping it. Is this the right loop mark? Slightly early. There we go. So that'll do. Um, I'll just group these together and uh, bounce them. Okay, so this uh, this loop's probably a good example. Um, let me just remove this track and I'll pull over Dear VR Pro. Uh, the good news about this is this plugin is paid for, but they do a free version, which I believe has actually got quite a lot of the controls. You don't get the reverb. You, I think you maybe get some of the reflection controls. If I'm honest, I don't really use the reverb here. Um, I just use it for these controls here. Um, so I can turn these off. Reflections might become handy again. So special thing about this plugin is it'll take um, ambisonics or whatever and output them to a binaural format. Again, you see these binaural renders? That means we can do these spatial audio effects on our headphones. So um, let's drag this guy over to my drum loop um, and I'm just going to loop this I've got two instances going on now so um, I'm just going to bounce can't find the bounce control. Come on. Oh, I can just right click on it, kind of. Um, audio. Bounce to a new track. Just so I can see the um, the information about the sound. Okay. So a couple of different um, a couple of di different things here. We've got T Cartishan, if that's the right way to say it, and Polar. Basically, what the Polar means is you're going to use these controls here to you you're going to use elevation and a zoometh to um, pan the audio around you. 
so this is polar, like 360. Um, just to decipher some terminology and jargon here, the azimuth basically means height. And we've got occlusion. Again, I might be pronouncing that. I just might be killing these. But occlusion is sort of like a filter. You'll hear all of these. And then distance is basically this is us in the middle and the distance is the um, how far away it is from us. So I'm not going to actually use it on this audio, but just to show you. Again, if you're just tuning in, please wear headphones. But listen how that entire file has that sound has gone to sort of like to the back of what in the right ear cam we can change the azimuth so we're getting more height cartesian again sorry for the buttering i'm pretty sure that's wrong it just means you can drag here which is which is nice to be honest so i wouldn't do this with something so fundamental as kick and snare And distance. And we have these distance controls here, but again, these are only effective for polar. We do have reverb as well. Like I said, don't really use them. They're good though. Sound great. But I do use reflections. Reflections just basically a way of me um, being able to have a bit more control over the these, the way the sound is bouncing off the walls in this room. Uh, we can change the X and Y axis, so you see my headphones here. There you go. Or I can do flip it the other way around, behind me here. So that's what this plugin does. Let's basically bypass it on here. This is mainly a beat. Okay, I'm just going to put on the metronome. I'm pretty sure this is not 150, if I'm honest. I'm not sure what beat this is. So for the time being, I'm just going to record without metronome. Pigments, I'm going to apply some DAVR to pigments. So this is a this is a, a patch I like a lot. We're not really looking at patches today. There's plenty of that if you want to watch it on the, other, the rest of the stuff. Okay, let me just record this in, give myself a little bit of time, and then we can explore um, what this does. Okay, that'll do, that's good enough, isn't it? Again, I'm just going to bounce this to audio, because pigments, as much as I love it, it goggles CPU, it's really... It loves the CPU. Okay, there we go. I immediately have thoughts of granular base design. Yeah, that would be that would be mega cool, wouldn't it? Um, so let's put um, let's put DVR on here. Um, da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, let's check. Um, we do have some presets as well, I believe, somewhere. But I just would say use your ears and move around. Now listen how different this is. And change the zoometh is the height so the occlusion is like that filter so we, we are not doing anything here in terms of eq and we're not doing anything in terms of reverb what we're doing is we are affecting the audio with spatial audio um changes so let's listen to the difference here this is immediately i, I did two things it's really changing So I've boosted the azimuth so we get height. Let's hear the before. I mean, there we go, we can hear it's it's no longer just stereo, it's inner space, isn't it? It's an environment. Let's try panning it a bit. So this is more sophisticated than just your typical left, right. This is the distance. And immediately you can start to think, well, that means that I don't have to just have left and right and use panning, or even just like you could maybe use ambience as a reverb and position it in the room a bit but you can't do what you can do here which is actually move it around in a room which is awesome i love that it sounds fantastic now we're going to boost the gain master gain let's 
here before. And after. Really, really, really good. Okay, um, let's do one more thing. Um, memory mode. This is a plugin that I did for uh, mem not memory for Cherry Audio. Really, just awesome plugin. I'm going to do the opposite of what I did with this one, and I'm going to put this onto the right hand side. Um, and again, let's just bounce it. I'm not even going to hear it to be honest. Audio event bounce to new track. And there we go. And just, um, da, 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 da. I, I might come back for a bass sound actually. We got just about enough time. So here's this one here. Okay, uh, another DR, by the way, DR, DR VR Pro is not CPU hungry, but also uh, they do a free one. So go grab that. DRVR Pro, DRVR Music is a slightly slipped down, uh, s slightly stripped down version of it. Let's check this now. So, oh yeah. Let's put this over to the right. Again, I'm just gonna boost the volume that we lose. So let's compare. Here is the original audio of uh, the Cherry Audio Plug. Okay, and here is what it would sound like if I literally just panned it right, which, let's face it, we're all doing. There's nothing wrong with it. Just why not think about putting your samples into environment? If I was to bounce this track right now, by the way, it bounces with the acoustic simulation, so it would sound exactly like it would do with the plugin. So if this is if I was to just pan the sound right. Actually, no, it's not. I've bypassed the plugin. <laughs> there we go. This is just pan right. Now this is, I'm going to return it to the center. This is with DRVR, which is spatial audio. Before. Again, I, I still love the sound of stereo, but you've got loads of these ear candy and atmospheric and textural layers that you want to, you want to put into more of a space, don't you? Let's hear them all together now. Okay, now I think you know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to come and grab some of my... Um, let's grab the skaters. So would you look at this? Da -da -da -da. My quadraphonic audio sample recorded with this guy is now a stereo file, but it's still binaural. Let's listen to it. You could just see how you could pair this with visuals to make it sound phenomenal, but um, let me trim this down. And uh, da -da -da. what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use this as a like a top layer um, EQ. Actually, the kilohertz EQ is really good. Um, KHS. Um, da -da -da -da. Frequency shifter, actually, that's what I meant, sorry. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to that afterwards. And now what I'm going to do is, let me set up a gate. Uh, here we go. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to sidechain this to the drum loop. Let's get both going. This is my ambisonic spatial audio binaural render. I know it's a mouthful. And I'm going to turn ducking mode off. This means that it'll open up every time the kick and stuff isn't too present. Let's try that. Okay, let's try it without ducking. A bit weird. Okay. This is really, really cool. So there, that's like instead of hi-hats almost. OK, 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is just a, uh, an EQ, Pro EQ, low cut, 80 hertz. Um, in fact, I can just roll off all that. Okay, so I've got both of these binaural renders, DAVR Pro, putting them into a space, and I have the actual... Um, the actual skate park recording, which is binaural using Ambisonics recorded to a stereo file. Let's check this out. This is so rough. I've literally made this, as you've seen, in three minutes. There's no mixing here. There's not really any sound design. It's just purely spatial audio stuff, but let's hear it. Okay, now all it needs is an awesome bass. That'll do, that'll do me nicely. So let's check it out then. Okay, so pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I let just for a couple more minutes, let's drop in some water, another binaural render, and let's just for the sake of uh, you know, time, let's just do the same thing. Uh, side chain to the same track. Let me hear this one. Um, ah, the water's not kicking in. Oh, okay. I didn't render. I didn't render the audio. <laughs> I rendered the jazz track. It'll be here somewhere. I think it will be. Crikey, could be here for a while now. Okay. No, uh, no water for today. But let's try um, fan blade. Let's try the blade one. Okay, I need to pitch this up a bit. I think it's three. Is that in the right key? No. Kind of. Is there a tune? Okay, let's just take the gate. So the blade's not the nicest sound in the world, but you get the idea. Oh dear, the camera has yet again left us. Crikey. Um, so you can see how binaural is basically something that I think people should definitely consider using and, and getting into. So here we go, FaceTime camera. That'll be better than nothing. <laughs> Take these off so I can see you properly. So um, let me just come in and answer some questions. This was a, a big, big stream. Um, there we go. So any questions you guys have? I'm just going to come and answer them while doing a temporary little camera set. So, 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 so. Uh, I hope everyone found that interesting. Um, it's something that really interests me a lot, I think, as you can tell. Um, and I just think there's a there's a lot to learn. Um, and, yeah, it's just super interesting for sound design, for creating your own samples. Out of curiosity, um, who would be interested in a sample pack of Ambisonics? Basically, I was tempted to... Um, create some samples that are available for stereo 
for people to use in their productions. It could be anything from instrument-specific packs for ambisonics to Foley or anything like that. But um, I, it's not really a thing yet, you know what I mean? It's I think there's one pack maybe, um, possibly on Splice, but it's not even a th it's not really quite caught on yet. So, okay, let me go back to where I was. Uh, okay, is this better than panning sound when scoring for music and movies to give absolutely um, MV Beckham? So, if you want to create stuff like the Doppler effect, you would use DAVR, and I'm probably just better off showing you it. And you could automate this here to go from left to right, and then you are basically using sound effects to visuals, which is something that's also super powerful for spatial audio. Um, no, you're correct. Ray FL Studio is, I think, also not supported. So you, me and you run the same camp with Studio One and FL. Uh, Ableton, you're sorted then. You can use Soundfield, download Soundfield. If you missed it, you can go watch that. I tried out DAVR as a demo and it's cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool, DAVR. Spend some time with it. You can always grab the free thing as well. Um... I'd have to do all the sound design able and then rewire or bounce to FL. Um, yeah, or Ray, you could do um, you could do it all in F um, in Ableton because Ableton's Dolby Atmos compatible. So yeah, can someone type the VST name? What I'm using here is DAVR Pro, and I was using Soundfield by Road. There's free version of Soundfield which is completely free, and there's a free version of DAVR Pro. There's also loads of other spatial audio plugins. Um, da -ba -da -ba -da. I immediately have thoughts of granular. Yes, sorry, I did read that before. Exactly. Combine things that we've looked at in the past, like granular, with spatial audio, and that is where we are starting to get into immersive audio. And it's about experiencing sound in a different way to what we have before. And that's just that is what I'm, you know, interested in. I've done it before during lockdown. I got experimental with mastering process and post through re -op. Yeah, mastering in Atmos or in surround could be interesting. But again, you could do just binaural renders. So just left and right, like it's it's almost like stereo, but yeah, it's binaural. So, but again, something to learn about for sure. Um, markup, yeah, plugin alliance, but I think the company is Dear VR, Dear VR Virtual Reality. It's Sennheiser has their own plugins, I believe. Totally getting the idea of using three D audio for mixing it would be so. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's it answers the the issue of confusion and confliction in mixes and sound design and, and like everything it, it answers the basically the question that you know we're fighting for room question or maybe presumption but are all those promises or yes correct so I, i'm i think all but i've automated things on these before and that's what i'm saying you could automate stuff like left to right there you get the doppler effect with something like a motorcycle um okay there's a, yeah okay there is free there's other plugins by the way and pangement i think i've heard of that um i think any giveaway no not i'm free if you're around tomorrow yeah jane will be here at 10 a.m pt 6 p.m uk talking about drums and music production okay i'll tune into that because i usually watch quite a few of those um Da, 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 da. I'm just trying to get through them quickly. Poor Brent. Yeah, those beats were dangerous. Is this better than panning sound? Yes, sorry, I answered that one before. You're not asking me, but I think it'd be super fun. Uh, uh, that's cool to hear that people wouldn't be interested in it. Yeah, yeah. I love when the sound in movies gives your emotions. Yeah, exactly. So that's spatial audio, basically. Um, and sound design. What was the name of the application, anyone, so I can download it? Oh, I think you're thinking of Soundfield, maybe. Um, by Road possibly anyway so um oh sorry i just distorted the the living daylights at the mic so i hope you found this interesting guys um if you want more sort of um you know guidance on spatial audio head over to the discord and i can answer questions on there about sound design or mixing anything like that um but in summary i believe that spatial audio whether it is atmos Spatial audio means a lot of things, by the way. It could mean Atmos, it could mean ambisonics, it could mean binaural almost. Like I think we've seen it's a thing now for Apple Music. Amazon was first to do it. Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, they're all getting on the let's make music experiences more interesting. And then that's number one. Everyone's getting their Dolby Atmos mixes done. Originally, it was came from cinema. Now it's going more into consuming literal music. Um, number two... What happened in lockdown is technologies emerged like virtual reality where people are starting to use um, virtual realities to, for education but also for experiences. Remember virtual reality performances and gigs? That'll be a thing in the future, for sure. 
in fact it's already happening it's just the technology is slowly coming along but i know sony have their own virtual um reality um soundstage where they're recording their artists and they're recording um they're recording artists using microphones ambisonics then they're mixing them in adobe atmos so it won't be long before these artists are using um uh, they're doing mixes in um in uh, 3d and they're using um you know uh, samples that are maybe 3d compatible the the beauty is as well if i had created a sample i could also um give say another user when you were to say buy a sample pack you could get the original quadraphonic file and then you could have your own you could make your own little mix of it using that free plugin so you actually have control over it again versus not being able to do anything with the sample previously you can just do things after again um so just quickly i hope it will be used more in post use more in general absolutely yeah it is a fascinating thing um I love binaural sound design. The more tools, the better. Absolutely, I think so. I think it will help music be more. S yeah, I just think it's going to help it in, like I said, so many ways. But anyway, this was a really, really fun one. Um, it's it it's a really, really big topic. But um, yeah, Soundfield by Road and Dear VR. I hope you enjoyed this, guys, and I shall see you in the next video. Have a great week. And Jane is here tomorrow night for um, I think it's drum production or something. I read that, but yeah, um. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.